If you have ever had trouble figuring out why your objects are of a certain color in different viewports, this video is going to be helpful. We will be covering five different components and understanding the difference between display color and render color. Here are the components in question. They are model material, query model materials, import model material, render material and render attributes. Let's begin with the components in render tab. The model material component is used to create materials for Rhino models. A material has to have a name and a shader that tells us how the material is supposed to behave in a rendered environment. You can add a shader container and right click on it to create your new shaders. Play with the parameters here and see how the objects behave. The query model materials is then used to query all the different materials that you have created in the Rhino model. If you have an external material library, you can use the import model material to get the materials from there. And moving on to the objects tab. The render material is one of the render attributes. This component is used to either select from which source does the object get the material from or assign a material directly to an object. You would then connect the object material to the render attributes component. Here you can also select how the object behaves in accordance to light. You can use the boolean toggles to change if it casts shadows or if it receives shadows. If you right click on the mesh settings, you can select the meshing parameters. This affects the quality of the rendered object. This is easier to understand with examples, so let's get to it. Here we have a rendered viewport on the right. If you don't know how to change the viewport style, you can click on the small arrow next to the perspective text and change this from wireframe to rendered. I am first using the query model materials, which will then get all the materials that I have in my model, because I have not assigned any filters to it. If you want, you can right click and add the match method. For example, if I connect the panel with the text red and use the contains filter, I will only get materials that contain the word red in their name. I am then using a list item component to get one of the materials from the list, using the render material component to pass the material as an object material. Here the source is by object and then using the render attributes to pass the object material to the model object component which takes the render attributes as one of its inputs. Now currently this material is the default material but if I change this slider to one and push the content it will change to my second material which is this uh, plaster and if I again change this it will take the random red color. You might have created new materials by clicking on the material properties of a layer in the layers panel. Here you can create a new material and select the surface. For example, I'm going to go with metal and select the color to be a bluish. And okay, this is my new material. But how do we then go and save the materials to files to send, for example, to our colleagues? The first way is to go to the Layers tab, double click on the material of the layer, right click on the material and select Save the file. I'm gonna save this as a new material and be done with it. The second way is to go through the Materials tab if you don't have the materials panel on your tool palette, then you can right click on this edge here and add it. You can then right click on the materials and save them the file just as we did before. Now this is going to be a random red. Now this is another place where you can adjust your materials. Now once you have sent the file over, the recipient simply needs to open the source folder Right click on the material, copy the path, go to grasshopper and paste it to a panel. 
get rid of these and connect the file path to the import model material component. Here I have used the imported steely blue material to render this box. Now this box is on layer 01 and the default material is red plaster. If I right click on the render material components source input and select the source to be by layer and then push the box will turn to use the plaster material of the layer. So you can revert this by right clicking in the source and selecting the material to be by object and then pushing the content again. Now we will move on to the real beef of this video. You can have different view modes in the Rhino viewports. Here on top I have a rendered viewport and on bottom I have a shaded viewport. As you can see the spheres in the viewports are of different color, but they are the same sphere. This is because the shaded viewport uses a color and the rendered viewport uses the render material. I am using the model object component to assign the display attributes and the render attributes to this sphere. You can check the display color video after this, but if I change the color here and push the content it's gonna change how this object looks in the shaded viewport. And here I have used the model material component to create a new color called random red. I have edited the shader settings here. I'm then connecting the material output to the material input of the render material and the object material output to the object material input of the render attributes. I'm then connecting the render to the model object component and I get this result here. Now if I want to change the color of this sphere in this rendered viewport I'm gonna have to edit the shader. For example if I want I can add transparency of 0.8 to it. Now if I push you can see that this sphere will become more transparent. If I want to add more materials to Rhino I can create a bluey blue, edit the shader, and push content. I currently have the mesh settings set to quality, but if I change it to default and push content, you should pay attention to the edges of the spheres. You can see that they become more rugged. This also affects how the sphere is displayed here in the shaded viewport. Now I don't like this so I'm gonna go back to the quality mesh. Now let's play with the shadow inputs. I have added another sphere to the Rhino model and a sunlight. Now if I toggle the cast shadows boolean to be false and push the content now this sphere no longer casts shadows. Now if I toggle the receive shadows to also be false and push content, this sphere no longer receives shadows from other objects. That is all for today. I hope you learned something from this video.